So Halo Infinite was originally going to be a hero shooter. This could possibly explain why there are so many issues with the game right now, why they've had so much time to develop Halo Infinite, but yet it feels like we just got started with development. And in this video, we take a deep dive into it. So if you guys wanna know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So it all kind of started from this tweet here from Chris Raygun. And some response to a tweet to saying like, how could they have such a large budget like Red Dead Redemption 2 style, but then come out with some little amount of content. And basically Chris Raygun states that, well, it's cause they spent a lot of that budget on trying to make like an Overwatch clone, having this Halo Infinite game be a hero shooter. Which I know when you hear that, you're like, oh God, things could have been so much worse. I know a lot of people were saying like, Halo Infinite isn't made for Halo fans. I'm like, what are you talking? about like Halo 3's multiplayer essentially plays like if Halo 3 was released in 2021. I mean it's essentially like the core mechanics are basically there you just basically have like clamber and slide. Because if Halo Infinite wasn't made for Halo fans you know what the game would have been like? It would have been a battle royale. It would have been a hero shooter. It would have had the core aspects of what makes the franchise so great probably stripped out of it and made into a much more monetizable kind of system like we have with like Apex Legends with their hero system and also how like Battlefield 2042 tried ripping out the core aspect of the t class system in favor for a hero-based system, which obviously hasn't turned out well for that franchise. And on this very Reddit post that talks about this tweet right here, Jason Schreier, who is a known insider and very credible source of information about gaming leaks and information, replied to this on here saying, this is actually cut from my article last year. Yes, 343 spent a while prototyping a hero-based system. I don't remember exactly when they switched to the current version and the tweet linked here seems exaggerated to the point where mostly false, but I can confirm that they were working on various hero-based prototypes in fact, I think there were both PvP and PvE prototypes built. And from leaks and rumors that I've heard around, this does seem to line up actually that like Halo Infinite could have been a hero shooter, which I don't know how the heck you write that out in a multiplayer game that'd be completely different than anything we've ever played before. And from what I've heard, even developers had to fight like tooth and nail to get the game that we got actually. Couple that with the bleak roadmap that we had for the basically the first year of support of Halo Infinite, we get one 4v4 map, one BTB map, a few new game modes, and looks like some narrative events, which is actually kind of interesting. I'm very looking forward to that kind of stuff. But like, this isn't a live service. This is just like a limp in to get it, the game out the door, basically, the people start playing it. Which then makes you think like, yeah, this probably does seem to make a lot of sense that the game that we got was probably thrown together in the last like year or two before it was actually pushed out the door. This also just makes you question like, oh my God, they were thinking about releasing this game in 2020 <laughs> from what we saw initially from that reveal where they basically caused the delay. I mean, I'm glad that delay happened because if we got that game, I mean, things would been a whole heck of a lot worse. It just really shows like, yeah, they really <laughs> needed that extra year of development time. It just makes me wonder like what's going on over there where things are just going at such a snails of pace when it comes to bringing new stuff to the game. I understand game development is very hard and their priority zero is to make sure there is not that huge amount of crunch where people's health comes into issues. But I think just people's patience with Halo is really thin. We waited six years between mainline Halo games for that to come out we thought the mcc was gonna be like a nice way to kind of hold us over which we waited four plus years for that game to be in a proper state and then with bringing the mcc to pc it was the waiting game of it's ready when it's ready so halo fans have been waiting like a long long time for to get a game to where they are happy about it and they want to keep playing it but it seems like we're gonna have to wait a bit longer but in recent development a person who actually worked on the game Roby, Justin Roby here where I actually met, great guy, actually replied to Chris Raycon saying that just didn't happen. To the fact that all the resources were put into this hero shooter and then thrown together last minute to just get like a traditional Halo game. Saying that he, like, he worked on the game and shipped the game as well and they prototyped a bunch of stuff to see like what could work within the game. He said it wasn't wasted time, it was just them trying out different things with the game, which 
would make sense that's kind of part of development is trying what works and what doesn't work saying here specifically that it was in the time allotted for the game to go through its design cycles and jason schreier echoing those things as well saying like yes people are spinning this in a way where this is the way the game was ruined kind of thing but like no this is all part of like the design process of what they're putting together kind of thing prior continues on saying that production problems as i wrote last year were largely the result of lack of coherent vision frustrating tools and contractor system which again kind of continues echoing a lot of the sentiment that i see at least like through glass door reviews general tone of people who've worked there basically saying that like working at halo is nice but the tools you have to work with are pretty tough the lack of vision and management is just not what it needs to be and the 18 month contractor turnover system that microsoft as a company as a whole utilizes which i you know i'm a part of it's super frustrating affects the development of the game as well but if this is all part of the design phase wouldn't you think you just focus on making a really good halo game that people expect out of halo so you can worry about more about the detailed stuff so what makes a halo great game a great game and rather than going some wild crazy route like making a hero shooter out of it again that lack of vision that they're talking about with halo the bumping of heads of developers and also management of going management wanted this way but the workers wanted it this way where it just it's such a just constant force of just uphill battles just to get a solid halo game out and the whole contractor thing is just an endemic thing about microsoft as a whole personally i've been working as a microsoft contractor since 2014 but never been hired by microsoft so i'm certainly qualified to do the work that they want there though with all this recent news going around it just makes me extra happy about the game that we actually did get that it's just a good halo game it's just lacking experiences that we need right now to kind of keep people entertained by it hopefully with the light at the tunnel with that tatanka mode as recently leaked by jess Corden, who's another very credible source when it comes to this type of information and saying how that it's being developed by a certain affinity who I, when i looked at their website they're doing a lot of development in unreal engine 4 not the slip space engine which is quite interesting to think about and saying that it is looked to be released within season 3 or season 4 so probably towards the end of this year beginning of next year but now knowing that season 3 is releasing at the beginning of november does make me kind of think that we could begin this battle royale mode at the end of the year which really could help bring and rejuvenate a lot more interest in the halo because right now the base game just isn't doing it and something like a battle royale mode would be something exactly halo would need by the time november rolls around because by that time it'd be a full year of the multiplayer being out and we'd have two battle passes and two maps and some extra little modes thrown in here and there not exactly a whole lot to keep people entertained and excited about the new things coming to halo what's happening with the game not really a whole lot now i have a very strong feeling that we'll get an announcement of this battle royale mode during the summer when usually we have the e3 event which if you guys don't know e3 2022 is not happening and so microsoft i'm sure will be throwing their own event kind of like what we did the last couple of years but only time will tell what actually happens. But I'll keep you guys updated with everything going on with Halo on this channel. So if you're new to the channel, miss any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. Got a link to all my Halo news and informational videos right there. Thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.